So you're a faith-based entrepreneur or you're an entrepreneur who loves Jesus and I love you for that too. Regardless of how you position yourself in the market, you have this uh, preconceived notion that sales are slimy. And I need you to know that we get to emulate everything that we do off of Jesus himself. He's given us a blueprint for how we get to show up to serve other people. Serving and selling are two drastically different things. So we are no longer knocking on people's doors in order to sell the Mary Kay product or the Avon, right? We might be knocking on people's doors still, but in a very different way, especially in this virtual world that we live in. And so why not emulate the one who showed us how to do it from the very beginning and instead of feeling that sense of sliminess, actually owning and standing and authority for the gift and the value that you have to offer the opposing party, right? And opposing, you're on the same team. So it's not one against the other, but a togetherness opportunity to serve and share and grow alongside one another. And that's why I always like to call my community, not necessarily clients, even though they might be in my system like that, um, but more so partners, people who I'm partnering with, people who I'm collaborating with, people who I'm helping to grow. Because every time that I help somebody else grow, they give me that iron sharpening iron experience. So here are five things to learn that Jesus taught us when it comes to creating a partner, partner, partnership, or client creation, onboarding experience, selling somebody new. Are you ready? All right. The first one is approach. It doesn't have to be slimy. It doesn't have to be salesy. You don't have to go straight for the jugular, right? We get to create a relationship with people. And so knowing this and really understanding that, that your very first DM to someone should never be about what you can offer them. Instead, it could be about how you can create relationship or connectivity to someone, something, somehow, right? Jesus was very much about creating a connection before he ever went in to discussing the hard things, the good things, the parables, any of that. And so recognizing what he was trying to sell was always his father, was always the goodness, the light, the love, everything that he was consumed of and made of. And so understanding approach is based on identity. So when you are comfortable in who you are and you know your why and you know you are certain of your purpose and you are standing in that place of authority, approach becomes a magnetism. And in fact, instead of having to go and DM, they come to you. How often did Jesus example this? He would walk into a city and people would be yearning just to see him. Now, I'm not saying that you need a paparazzi around you or that people are gonna just follow at your skirt tails to touch your cloak. They, in fact, understand that there's something unique about you, that the light within you is exuberant and people want a piece of that energy, a piece of that joy, right? I get this often. And people are like, I love your energy. Well, it's an energy source that I'm connected to that I get to share. And so out of that sharing, I'm not depleting in my approach. I'm not giving another component of myself. Instead, I am just collaborating and serving from a place of abundance. So approach is number one. Well, how are you approaching people? If it feels slimy, it's because it's probably slimy. So let's unpack that a bit. Show up in your identity, be all that you're created to be, be authoritative in your identity and magnetizing in your identity and see what God does with it. Number two, timing. Okay, Whew. Jesus was never in a rush. He was never in a rush. And this is something I'm gonna say out of my mouth as I often do, and I am going to realize that this might be for me because my pace is not on par with Jesus often. I am getting ahead of my own mouth. I'm getting ahead of my own brain. I'm getting ahead of my own body when I propel myself into specific places. But do you see what happens when I propel myself? There is an air of depletion. There is a pace that is preceding the timing of God. And so instead of going and knocking, and then a day later knocking, and then a day later knocking, it's a deposit. So understanding that your seed though needs to be cultivated and there needs to be the watering and the nurturing and the know, like, and trust grow, how you hear marketing people all the time. This is how you create a relationship to establish the sale. Think of it more like watering a plant. A lot of people will utilize the analogy of dating, right? You're not gonna go on the first date and then the very next day, 
show up at their for their footsteps, right? At their doorstep and be like, hey, how's it going? They're like, How did you get my address? That's a little creepy. People are doing this every single day as entrepreneurs. They're literally finagling their way into a relationship, into a sale. And God's timing is intentional. And so if you allow the pace in which you show up to serve and the pace in which you show up to sell, let him precede you in that space. Let your valuation precede you in that space as he did. He showed up in that place, just like you said, in that identity. It allows that timing, one, to transform very quickly. I've witnessed this firsthand, but also realizing that not everybody is ready at the time that you anticipate that they're ready or the time that they even, you need them. That's often what happens is you're thinking, I need to gain a sale. I need to turn this lead in order for me to establish my salaries for the month, right? I get it. I have overhead. I understand. Um, but I would definitely encourage you from an overhead perspective, one, let's have a conversation. What is your overhead like? And two, understanding that that should be the basis by which everything exists, not necessarily the basis by which you need to feed mouths. If that doesn't make sense to you, DM me. But what I mean basically is making sure that the expenses that are going out are covered consistently so that there's not that stress when you show up for a sale. All right, number three, connection. Jesus is the ultimate connector. Everywhere he goes, there was nothing about him outside of his humanness um, that created a deterrent, that created a roadblock for people to come into community with him. Are you open? Are you equal? Are you willing to show your imperfections? Uh, not that he was imperfect, because he clearly wasn't, but he was willing to show his emotions. He was willing to have a conversation with people and go deep. And in that pace, which is the number two, that timing, he was willing to connect even outside of a time limit. So this is a really big one. So when I give intro call time slots to people, um, I allow 15 minutes of my time. And I can assure you, I could probably count on one hand how many times that that 15 minute slot was actually um, either cut short or only 15 minutes. I create the margin in my calendar with those 15 minute time slots to allow myself to have 30, sometimes 45 minutes uh, with those people. One, because what's showing is showing that you're investing in the conversation. A lot of times I'll hear people, I know you're really busy. Um, I, it's okay. I, we can have another call. Or I know that you probably have a lot going on. Or I know we're over time, so I don't want to take any more of your time. Now, I am very mindful of their time in the same um, experience and letting them know actually I have a few more minutes. If you're good for another five, I am too. You're interested. How would that make you feel if somebody who only time blocked a certain amount of time gave you more? It's not about me being busy. It's not about me having a really packed schedule that nobody has access to. It's being intentional with where I'm placing my energy, where I'm placing my time. So if I knew within that 15 minute time sector, this might not be a right fit, a right congruency, a right connection, then I can pass that time off to the time block and let that be the boundary in which I set. But if I get to experience more outside of what that boundary that I set previously in protection, uh, those people see that investment of time and generally speaking, there is a good return, right? And so be mindful of that both ends. Um, you don't want to give an abundance and then feel like you've been taken advantage of either. I don't believe Jesus ever felt that way because his ultimate goal obviously was to change hearts and changing hearts doesn't happen without connection, without time, and without a gentle approach, which is one, two, and three backwards. Number four, qualification. So this is really huge and, and I think it's often overlooked Oh, my light just went out. That's lovely. Thank you for ring lights and a dreary day. This is kind of fun. I've got a shadow. I feel like Peter Pan. Anyway, back on track. Qualification is Jesus called by name. Every single time he interacted with, by someone, Zacchaeus come down from that tree. Woman, right? A woman, though he didn't maybe say that woman's name. They had not been recognized as such because of the ailments or the struggles of their testimony. And so, while of course you're gonna know the person's name, I hope that you're on the conversation with or DMing or Instagramming, though I, mm, let's talk about that really quick. Thank you for this memory, this little nugget. Hey girl, hey sister, can you really talk to someone like they're your best friend if it's your very first time? 
I believe that there's an air of comfortability and there's the air of, let me just be the friend to everyone. Jesus is the friend to everyone, right? Or the open one. It's this understanding that people want there to be a courting experience before you're calling them that. So while I do truly believe that everyone is my sister and brother, I really like there to be an exchange um, for that connection to occur, that approach, timing, and connection before I'm qualifying or um, creating qualification for who they are classifying, if you will. Qualification, classifying, we could use both in this, but I, I specifically said qualification. So you're calling them by name. A big part of that beyond just their name is making sure you're saying their name multiple times in the conversation because one, it's depositing into you who they are and what this conversation entails, as well as it's allowing you to remember their name next time. It's super important. Um, and I think people really value that. In addition, it might not be a name basis thing yet. And so when I think of qualification, I think about calling out the greatness in another person. And so, wow, you're really amazing with the way that you put your language together and the way that you public speak. Wow, I loved the way that you just prayed for her. That was incredible. Wow, I love this idea. How long have you been working on this? How long have you been establishing this education or this expert leadership within this thought pattern, right? It's giving compliments. Complimenting qualifies. And that qualification gives them energy, authority in their own space to see you in the mirror. If you're calling out their greatness, they are then seeing the greatness in you. There becomes a symbiotic relationship. You can now call them friend, sister, girl, whatever it is that you need to. And there becomes a just another sense of know, like, and trust, another sense of iron sharpening on another iron and that community build that we're ultimately looking for. Because while that timing piece ultimately might not be that they're the one-on-one -on -one client right now. It might not be that they enroll in the program right now. They might not need the product that you have. However, if they're creating community because they now know, like, and trust you, they now feel seen and heard and known, they're going to come into community with you. And when it is the right time, guess who they're going to come to? The person who remembers their name, the person who called out their greatness, the person who had a gentle approach and wasn't so concerned about the sale that they just completely wrote off every other thing going on in their life. How are you today? What's going on in your life today? My favorite question is not what do you do, but why are you passionate? What are you passionate about? So number five, lastly, is environment. He didn't need a specific controlled environment in order to share, to share about his father, to call or qualify that person, to help that person up, to take the time to spend with that person outside of the controlled time of his plan, his original plan. He's, his plan is greater, right? And so the disciples had the plan and he in fact was like, no, that's actually not what we're doing. We don't need to be in that city at this time. We're gonna actually pour into this person. So when I talk about environment, I don't just mean the timing piece that we talked about before. I also mean the control factor. You might run into someone if your margin is there, if your present mind is there, you might run into them at the store, the gas station, the clubhouse room, the Instagram scroll. And if you take the time rather than going so quickly by without reading the thing, investing in the person, turning it from, oh, it's okay if you don't wanna do a Zoom call, I'm actually free right now to chat, uh, just regular. We don't have to, we don't have to see each other. Or hey, I'd love to experience you. And I feel like experiencing you is when I can see your face and feel your energy. Let's jump on a Zoom call. Oh, you're not comfortable with a Zoom call? Okay, great. I can send you a quick email with all of that information and then you can get back to me and when you're ready, we can do so. Or hey, join me in this other space that feels a little bit less in, um, intense. He didn't control the environment. Instead, he controlled himself and the way he presented, he controlled the words coming out of his mouth and he didn't allow any other distractions to inhibit him from doing the one mission. So I think distractions in that environment setting is really important. I heard yesterday, people were actually on Clubhouse while also on a date, like a first date. Now I am totally guilty of being on Clubhouse when my husband's around and I'm like, I really need to get off this thing because I really want to be present with you, but this is a really good conversation and I might have a chance to speak and I get it, the struggle is real. But how do you think that date went? On both occasions. It wasn't as intimate, it ended quickly. 
it, it didn't have the ability to grow or blossom or nourish as well as it could have. And so eliminate distractions, be fully present with the people you are looking to bring community into, or even just impart into for maybe that 15 minutes, maybe that one hour, whatever that looks like. Be present, be intentional, show up for people like Jesus did, and you'll be just, you'll be enthralled by what happens. So again, the five things to learn from Jesus in your sales or onboarding strategy is your approach, is your timing, your connection, your qualification, and your environment. You guys, be blessed. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below or comment, subscribe, review. I'd love for you to tag a friend or share this somewhere on your social media. It means a ton to me to be able to just deposit into people what we know biblically to be true, what we learn every day uh, from Jesus himself in our own prayer lives, from church, from Sunday service, from the pastors in our lives, from the worship music in our life. But are we actually implementing it in our business? That is the question. And that is where I want to help people cultivate and pursue well because we aren't just Christian when we wake up for Bible study and we aren't just Christian when we're there on Sunday. We are Christian all the time. We are faith-based servants and we need to show up exuding that. It's the very reason I'm holding the Kingdom Clubhouse Conference coming up in October in Norfolk, Virginia. If you are anywhere on the map, anywhere, you're welcome. We've got a ton of seats in person, not as many as I'd like, but that means they're exclusive and you're going to have incredible connection with the people that are there. It's going to feel like family by the time we leave. I have no doubt about it. I did it with intention despite COVID. And then also we have virtual access to the globe. So if that's you, wherever you are, go to kingdom-clubhouse.com. I cannot wait to connect and for you to be able to have access to more tools just like this from onboarding to offboarding, from the interaction to the whole business build from the programming to the strategy. It's all there. It's all exampled. And I cannot wait to unpack it further with you and see how you're doing it too. Because I know Iron Sharpens Iron. I know you have your own element of expertise and I can't wait to learn from you as well. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.